You know, I haven't had a good rant in a while. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman here on the YouTubes. Today's video is gonna be about five common fly fishing mistakes that I see a lot. This isn't gonna be so much about fishing techniques, but more philosophies of fly fishing or lifestyles of fly fishing, whatever you wanna call it. I've probably mentioned some of these things before, but they are worth repeating. First, I wanna tell you about my website, hugeflyfisherman.com, where you can get all kinds of huge fly fisherman gear and other fly fishing stuff. You can also check out my other channel at special.tv where you can get things that you can't get here on YouTube and you won't have to listen to what I'm about to do right here. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN, so let's talk about that for a minute. What is a VPN? It's a virtual private network, a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. Basically, it encrypts your data and hides your IP address by routing everything through servers around the world. NordVPN is easy to use. You can connect with one click or you can set up auto connect and save yourself the time of that one click. You could probably tie up an ecstasy egg with that time. With NordVPN, you can also double VPN. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I think it's like fishing a double nymph rig. You're doubling up with a little extra insurance. You can find streaming platforms at a lower price, or if a platform isn't available in your country, you can use NordVPN to change your virtual location. And if you're a fly fisherman, your virtual location is going to be the Seychelles, right? To sign up for NordVPN, just go to nordvpn.com slash huge fly fisherman to get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. So go check out NordVPN and give them a shot. I know this isn't something I do a lot, but it helps me out, so here it is. Thanks Thanks NordVPN for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get to that video. All right, let's dive in. The first mistake I see all the time is actually a spelling mistake. That may sound weird, but I see it all the time and it really bugs me. This is how you spell flies, F-L-I-E-S. Not like this. It's not F-L-Y-S. I cannot believe how often I see this. I get it that some people aren't great spellers, that's fine. But this is a very basic word that is pretty integral to what we're doing here. Even worse is when I see it in someone's brand name, and I see it a lot. I'm not gonna call them out personally here, but uh, go check the spelling in your brand name. There are a million like 731 flies companies out there, and half of them have the word flies spelled wrong. Come on, people, that's like me putting a D in the word huge. You're fly fishermen. You're supposed to hold yourself to a higher standard. Please spell the word flies correctly. Thank you. Next up is a photography mistake, or it's probably more of a pet peeve for me. Let me show you an example. See this fish? Looks kind of cute, right? It's smiling. No, it's not. It's disfigured from being caught. Its maxilla, its upper jaw is missing. It probably got ripped off by a fish hook. It's likely that the maxilla on the other side of the fish is still intact. Take a picture of that side of the fish. Just take a quick moment to examine the fish and take a picture of its good side, not its mangled side. Put yourself in that fish's fins. A lot of people might not even notice this in pictures, but I do, and now you will too. I just want to imagine that you're fishing somewhere pristine where the fish don't get caught all the time. I know that's not always true, but just let me think that. It just looks nicer if it's an intact fish. It's called aesthetics. Look it up. Okay, now we're gonna talk about casting. Specifically, false casting too much. Everyone does this. Yes, even me. This is you when you're fishing. Hey everyone, look at me, I'm fly fishing. Isn't it glamorous? 
The fly cast is really an art form. Shut up. I just caught three fish while you were busy waving your rod around. You want to false cast as little as possible. The more false casting you do, the more chance there is that something will go wrong, like a tangle. And the fly's got to be in the water to catch fish, so put your fly in the water. Almost all casts can be made in just two or maybe three false casts. Three false casts is pushing, and some casts can be made with no false casts. When your bobber rig drifts down below you, you can just let it pull tight, then flip it back upstream. No cast needed. That's called water loading. That's today's pro tip. But that's just one example of how you can cast with no false casting. Anyway, let's move on. Next, we're gonna talk about fly tying. Do not cut the tips of hair or feathers when you are tying a fly. This is you when you're tying a fly. Oh wow, I've tied this great fly, but I think the tail is too long. I'm just gonna trim it back a little. First of all, good eye, proportion is very important when you're flying ties. But do not cut that marabou tail on your woolly butt. It kills the natural action of the feather and it just looks funny. It gives you this real hard edge on the tail. If you have to cut the tail, pick it and pluck it like this when you're done. It makes it look more natural. I see people do this with hair wing dry flies too, like an elk hair caddis or a stimulator. Don't cut the tips of the hair. It looks awful. Will your fly still catch fish if you trim the tips of the hair or the feathers? Yeah, probably, but only the dumb fish. The next common mistake I see is not using floatin' and dry shake properly when you're fishing dry flies. I made a whole video about this. It was one of my first ones. It's kind of hard for me to watch. Anyway, this is how it works. You put the floatin' on the fly before you fish. It waterproofs the fly and keeps it from getting wet. Eventually the fly will get wet and not float anymore. That's when you use the dry shake. It dries the fly out. Putting floatin' on a fly that is already wet will not make it float. And after you dry shake the fly, do not put the floatin' on it again. Just keep using the dry shake until you get sick of it and it's time to put on a fresh fly. Then put floatin' on that fresh fly. Not flesh fly, fresh fly. For our last common fly fishing mistake, we're gonna get a little more abstract. Don't get stuck in a rut. Don't do the same thing all the time. Maybe you always fish the same spot or use the same flies or the same techniques. You like it, you know it, you're good at it, and you catch fish. That's great, but you're not learning anything. If you want to grow as an angler, you need to try new things. Go fish somewhere new. Try streamers instead of dry flies. Fish for carp instead of trout. It could be anything, but you have to be willing to fail and you have to be okay with that. You will still learn something from those experiences. And if you can't learn from your failures in fly fishing, well, maybe this isn't for you. And if you just do the same thing every time you go fishing, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're cheating yourself out of learning what fly fishing is really all about. Well, that's the way I see it anyway. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch another one of my huge fly fisherman videos. I'll be back as soon as I can with another huge fly fisherman video for you. In the meantime, stop doing the tail lift, it looks stupid, and stay huge. I mean, I just, I don't get it. Why, why the tea kettle? I don't, what is the point of that? And the only reason people do it is because other people are doing it. Ay.